Guys, that was a great show. John, Chris, fantastic. Uh, premier banker in the room and someone for the banking family. We've always got this contradiction now that you guys are out there instead of making money for the banks, trying to help people save their money and not give it to the banks. But Chris, when you came up with this program, were there challenges along the way, the obstacles in trying to create it, or people saying you should just leave it alone? Were, were there difficulties? There's, there was nobody saying leave it alone because eff effectively there was nobody that I would be talking to who would want to leave their mortgage alone if there was a better option. The challenge in the whole process, the person I had the most trouble convincing was myself. So as I would write the, these Excel programs, and it's still unbelievable to people I presented to. So realistically, part of my, my conversation with them is, I'm going to show you something now. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you really expect that you'll pay your mortgage off over 30 years, sir or madam? And the answer is, well, yeah, that's the term of my loan. And I think that's the biggest hurdle for people to get their heads around is that it doesn't have to be. That's just what the bank has said for that amount of money at that interest rate. It's going to take you that long to do that. Now, the tricky part, or the, the tricky part is then to say, well, look, um, you're thinking 30, I'm thinking 12. And they're doing, yeah, right, come, come on, dear, start the car. Um, so realistically, it's, it's I know that sounds unre un unrealizable uh, from your perspective. I'm going to show you now why. I'm going to show you month by month that by leaving your money in your mortgage and not giving it away to a financial planner or somebody who thinks they're more clever than uh, than you are, just leave it in your in your bank account. I don't want it. It was very powerful in in my financial planning business, and it remains powerful today. What I want is to leave your money in your mortgage, and you'll see that you'll create savings. And as you create savings the natural progression for the products that have always been there, that the banks have always offered, used properly, will result in you compounding those savings. That, that compounding scenario results in you paying sometimes a quarter of a million, sometimes $300,000 worth of interest less. Wow. One thing that you said, Chris, in the show is you didn't try to sell people products. You concentrated on a, on a system that would help them. Where does that come from within you? What, why? Because you, you've met a typical, typical life insurance salesman or any salesperson. It's a product. They, they wouldn't have that mindset. Where do you think that came from? Oh, probably people saying to me, I'm going to cut my, my insurance down, Chris, because my mortgage is too high and I can see my income disappearing out, out, out the door. That's the, that sort of a mindset. But I come from a family where um, I lost my mother when I was 14. Um, my dad made it to 90, but there was no insurance floating around. My lifestyle was, it's not a tragedy, you know, but my lifestyle was um, affected by, by circumstance and, and a lack of, lack of forethought, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, not deliberate, just in quite normal if you look at stats in Australia for people to underinsure themselves. So first of all, it was, it was completely motivated by me not wanting people to <laughs> cancel their insurances or, or reduce them. Um, and then secondly, from there, I realised that by, by providing a strategy rather than a product, and this is, a, as I mentioned to John in the, in the conversation, in the interview, that if, if I can show somebody a way to do something as a strategy, then add a product to that to support that strategy, that's a far more powerful message than saying, I'm going to sell you some life insurance because you're going to die. Backing up the hearse, they called it in the old days. Backing up the hearse. <laughs> That's charming. John, <laughs> John, when you hear this, song, it's interesting that I see the similarities between the two, not just from the banking background, mm. but Menmore itself is about systems and about empowering people. Yeah. Where does, where does that come? You, you're again, you're not a product salesperson. You've mm. come out and gone, I'm going to teach people systems and empower them so they can enrich their lives. Yeah, Michael, it's, um, it's a duty of care and a duty of responsibility. It's one of those things where once you know something, you can't unknow it. So the point, of, the point is effectively that um, I've come across people like Chris, 
with important messages and ways of helping people. Um, and for me, there isn't or has there isn't enough of a platform getting that message out. So that I guess what I'm trying to do. I, I'm not capable of doing what Chris is doing in terms of um, creating and delivering a program to hundreds of people that saves them thousands, or hundreds of thousands of dollars in mortgage. But I can tell people about it, and I can bring other people, uh, other people to the table in terms of, hey, this is an important thing. You should know this. Um, I guess in terms of my my, my banking background and, and where that plays into it. At the end of the day, my job was to look after people. It happened to make my employer money, but my job was to look after people and the families. And a lot of the time it was to look after the little people, the kids that I would never meet and they would never know who I was. But if I didn't do my job properly, then potentially they would be impacted. So it's that kind of responsibility, as I'll probably say a million times, but duty of care, duty of responsibility. If I know what the right thing to do is, I can't not do it. When you're talking to people and educating them and exposing them to this knowledge, yeah. what's the biggest obstacle people have of getting their heads around it? So this is could be real for them, for the yeah. average person. Well, it's becoming a little bit easier these days, to be fair. Um, the news and the media and the regulations and things are now coming on board um, with things like the Royal Commission to show, well, actually, people aren't doing the right thing yeah. in, in positions of authority. Um, it might be that someone else with a different viewpoint from those that are in positions of authority might actually be right. So when we come across, we say, as just you know, little old me coming across and saying, hey, think about, look at, there's a lot more people now that are doing so. And they're able to check that information, which is really important through the power of social media, uh, Facebook, all the other bits that are out there. They can turn around to a, a large group of people and say, hey, is this right? And they can get social proofing. Whereas before we were just perhaps told information and we had no other source to authenticate via, and now we can. Listening to you too, and you're authenticating, and you're empowering, and enriching people's lives. That's one thing I want to ask, Chris. Someone takes on your program and starts working through the program. What do they get out of it at the end of the day, all right, they're going to save some money, but what do you think it brings to their life when we hear John talk about families and children and so forth? What do you think it really brings to them? Security. It, it gives them, uh, one of the analogies I use, which is pretty pretty corny, you need to, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client or clients, you need to see a light at the end of this tunnel, and it shouldn't be the train coming the other way, it should be the exit, you know, the sunlight, or, and you know, not, not at the end of your life either. Um, so they get security. There's in, in years and years of sitting in front of people, 30 years of sitting in front of people, I know, I know two things really well. Um, uh, in, in a um, husband and wife scenario, um, the nurturer worries about the home. The husband's bulletproof, typically, in, in his own mind. Um, but we need to give him a vest. So there, there's all these linked processes. So... If I can show them a way um, without anything spectacularly dangerous in what we're doing, in fact, nothing that's dangerous in what we're doing, um, to get out of debt earlier, to own that thing that keeps a roof over their heads earlier, it's pretty easy to convince them that they need to protect the things that are creating that, which is their income, their health. We have a range of products that I'm working on with John to introduce different ways to to pay more cheaply for good product um, to protect the strategy. So again, I think it goes back to I'd love for my industry to change its name from financial planning to investment advising. Yeah, my father, to be fair, was very upset when I went into banking. He wanted me to be a landscape gardener because he was good on his work. And that yeah. still stands true today. Uh, and to be fair, Michael, one of the programs, just to, um, one of the concepts that we're working on closely with um, with government authorities and things is to bring together a FIFO pro family program. Yeah. So um, FIFO families, which is a major part of the Australian lifestyle, although I'm fortunate enough not to be, um, to a degree, um, fortunate, um, in that um, there's the four Ds that are, that are a much higher propensity to exist in a FIFO family, and that is... Depression, divorce, drugs and death. The four Ds of the apocalypse almost. But it's statistically higher to happen in those families. 
And one of the things that happens within that from a financial perspective that we understand is that um, someone goes to do some FIFI work because they're going to earn more so they can have pay off the mortgage quicker is quite, is quite often the common thing. But then it's an unhappy environment because they're not at home so much, um, more spending happens to compensate for that unhappiness and in the end a five-year plan becomes a 20-year lifestyle. So part of the plan that we're going to take forward is to go to five five families and say, hey, let's put in place a date. Let's give you an end date to what you're currently doing. Bring in the mortgage escape conversation, show you how you can do that, work together as a team, work together in terms of reducing the borrowing in very simple ways that aren't going to affect your lifestyle. You can still have holidays, you can still have the things you want to a degree, just bring a date to it. And that's what we're going to do next. That will be part of the mortgage escape and metamore um, plan for the future. That's exciting. It's really exciting. And, and five fours are big, especially here in West Australia yeah. where we are. Absolutely yeah. huge. Nice. I guess there are people out there now watching this and getting quite excited, but we know what human beings are like, and they're probably going to go, will it work for me? Are there people it won't work for? Or can anyone get a bite of this cherry, so to speak, get a piece of the cake? Without doubt. The, but one of the strengths, especially with the live feeds now, one of the strengths is you have got people at, at, in, in our business who actually care whether it works or not. So if it doesn't work in the first instance, let's work with the client to say, okay, this program, not devised by me because I don't have the skills, will categorise where your spending is going. It'll categorise how much money you're actually putting into your bank account. You will have paid your first bill. Your tax is being paid. Um, we, if, if we can't create a program now, let's work to where we can create a program. Let's understand. Let's be able to make um, informed decisions about where we're moving forward because, you know, it's the old saying, knowledge is power. So once you know where you're at and you, you at least have some people behind you like premium bankers um, and old guys. Um, Ex-premium. <laughs> Ex-premium -premium bankers. bankers. I don't know. It's an, it's an award well worn. <laughs> yes. um, at, at the end of the day, we, we can... The answer to the question is absolutely. In fact, we're looking... We met last night with, with uh, Alinda, um, who deals in, with, with specific type of client. Uh, he's, a, he's a broker. Um, and that client has got something wrong somewhere along the line and the big banks don't want to deal with them and that's their market. And they say, come to us and we'll look after you. And he said... To, said to me, Chris, is that the kind of business you really want? I said, more than anything else, that's the kind of business I really want. Because they're people who are likely to listen. They're likely to say, you yeah, look, we tripped. You know, um, we're, we're, not, we're not evil, we're not villains. We've made a boo-boo. Now, the bank doesn't like us anymore. Is there a way out here? And I find that those kind of, those people who have been through those sorts of experiences um, are far more accepting immediately that that help is a, is, is not an embarrassing thing to be asking for. Yeah. So, yeah, no, everybody, stick your hand up. I don't care if they haven't even got a mortgage. You know, I find I have a very young database now, surprisingly, <clears throat> or younger than my children. Um, and those guys have earned good money. And the first thing they've done is get a credit card, buy a flash car, usually a Subaru. Is that an ad? Have I just made an ad for somebody? Subaru, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They buy a really Any flash. fast cars are fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a fast car, credit card to go on a trip, yeah. and now they can't pay them off. Yeah. So we can even solve that problem. We've, we've even got processes to put, to put in place to help with that, to move them forward. We can do things like um, simulate the opportunity to buy your first home, how to get out of that debt, how to make that step into, into saving some money so you've got a deposit, um, and how to, how to go through the entire process. So... Um, I was asked once what my what, what my preferred client was. You know, you know, air in the lungs, blood in the veins, that'll do the trick. <laughs> There's plenty of those in, in, in Australia, especially with a lot of debt. Fantastic. Guys, I really appreciate you staying back out to the show, having a little chat with us. Uh, John, what a great show that uh, Metamore is. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. And, and the Emerging Technology Show, I'm sure you've got some more exciting guests coming on. And Chris, I really appreciate your time staying back as well for a bit of an extra chat. Yeah, Fantastic, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Michael. Just to, just a quick note to say, I think the next show is going to be a genetic engineer looking at cancer um, cancer treatment clauses, cancer treatment um, medicines, developing cancer treatment medicines.